Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you an awesome new vSphere 5 feature called Host Based Cache. So in this video I'm logged on to my vCenter server and I already started my vSphere client. And this is a new cool host ESX4-L and uh, I've put in an SSD drive in it. So when I'm going to storage adapters and I'm Navigating to VMHBA33, you will see that there is a local SATA disk OZC uh, SATA, uh, SSD drive uh, in there. And when I'm going to storage, so this, this drive used to be my laptop and it broke. And I, I've heard a lot of Vertex disks are uh, not functioning that probably these days. But uh, I don't want to put it in my laptop again and let it break my system again. So for now I'm using it for VMFS and I'm going to put VMFS 5 on it. So let's see what happens when I'm going to storage and I'm choosing for the option add data store. Then I see the newly detected T10 and based on the T10 identifier automatically I will receive the matches that uh, this is solid state drive and that I can use it sol this solid state drive for uh, host based cache. It means that the swap files of the virtual machines are placed on this drive and when swapping is involved you have the option to do it fast to SSD. So let's see what happens. I've attached the SSD drive to an HCA11 controller. It's in my host and I'm going to create a partition and format this drive with VMFS5. Let's put in a name. And let's see what happens. So I, al I already received a notification that when you are using SSD storage in your ESX host, based on the T T10 identifier, there is automatically a detection that SSD storage is used. And once you have created a data store on it, you can configure your ESX host with host cache configuration to use this data store for the swap files of your virtual machines. So let's go to host cache configuration and there we see the newly created SSD drive data store and when I right click this data store and I'm going to the properties I can say allocate space for host cache and I'm I can use the maximum available 166 but I also can put in a custom size. In this case it's a pretty large drive and I don't want to eat up all my expensive SSD storage. So I'm putting in 50 gigabytes. I think it's a, it's it's too much. I'm putting in 10 gigabytes of uh, swap space. So we're going to hit OK. And the host cache configuration is done. Let's take a peek what has happened on the back side. So SSD, browse data store. There is a special folder right here and it has a subfolder called host cache and you see 10 1 gigabyte cache files here already. Take a good look at the timestamp. They are dated at 23 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. Okay. Okay, so that's fine. We have created host cache. All the virtual machine swap files are automatically placed on this thing when swapping occurs. So let's take a look at this, window, this uh, Windows machine, Windows XP. Uh, the settings of this machine are very interesting because when I'm going to the resources tab of this VM, I will see that the limit of the memory of this virtual machine is zero. So, so let's put it on unlimited first. What I, I'm running the special Pulsemark uh, software in this VM and I'm doing a very heavy memory access write test. So I'm uh, doing lots of writes in the memory. First of all, without any restrictions. So uh, this machine should get physical memory and all the memory uh, it needs. So in this case, we won't see any swapping or ballooning or compression or whatever. And when we go to resource allocation, uh, we can take a peek what happened in the past and we say we see that there was some swapping in the past there's shared memory there's ballooning and there's also active memory 
And when I'm going back to this Windows XP machine, and I'm going to add the settings, and I'm going to the resources tab, and I'm selecting memory, and I'm doing not unlimited anymore, but the limit of this virtual machine is, well, say 50 MB. Then the virtual machine has one, gig one gigabyte configured and at resources we only allow it 50 MB of physical RAM. What will happen is that this virtual machine will create ballooning, will create swapping, will create memory compression. So we're going to do the memory test again and give it a go and then there will some be some significant swapping and ballooning and compression involved so let's take a a peek at this virtual machine go to the advanced button and see what happens on memory level so ballooning where's ballooning ballooning is not available yet granted is here okay Active is here and consumed is here. Maybe we have to do another memory test. I don't know. Let's run it for a while. But there is also a new feature and you can add additional performance options charts. And when I'm going to the chart options, you will see that you can also see how, mu how much host cache is used for swapping. And that's very interesting because I want to generate some host cache and prove that it's actually working. And you see the host cache go up right here that's cool so the, the virtual machine is under stress and host case used for swapping is rising a little bit so I think we also have to see this at ESX level so when I'm going to the host where the virtual machine is running on I'm going to performance I'm going to advanced I'm going to memory uh, there will be some indicators right here uh, that we can also see how much host cache is used so let's go to the chart options and let's go to memory real time host cache used for swapping and you can also see host cache in and host cache out swap in from host cache and swap out from host cache and a swap rate apply that's very interesting so let's take a look at swap in it's very low yeah it's going up a little bit right here this one also so what I also should see is that when I'm going to home data, data stores and data store clusters and I'm selecting my SSD storage then when I'm going to the performance tab uh, and I'm looking at performance over the real time on this SSD drive then there should be some reads and writes on this SSD drive let's scroll down a little bit there you see it some activity right here I think this was the creation of the VMBK files and we see some large activity right here and also here so let's take a look at the data store itself and browse it browse the data store go to the subfolder and there should be one file touched because there's reads and writes and we see right here that the other files are still with the old time but the last file right here is actually used very recent until this moment so the host cache is actually used on this ESX host so let's go back to the virtual machine uh, what I did was I deliberately created a situation where a virtual machine didn't get enough physical memory and it was forced to do ballooning when ballooning is done swapping will be involved you see the host cache rising right here so when ballooning is done uh, swapping is involved and ballooning will take 65 percent of the memory of the host swapping will take uh, or compression will take 10 percent and in the end swapping occurs and then you have the option to swap to to, to SATA storage or to fiber channel storage or to SSD and SSD is the most fast storage to swap to. 
So, Eric Sloven signing off. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.